We have driven all the way from Miami, Florida to New York City. We slept in Daytona Beach, Savannah, North Myrtle Beach, and Washington DC, and visited many other places along the way. We finally arrived and spent Christmas evening in the city and drove around Manhattan on the next day. We also drove around the New Jersey side, the not so touristy parts of the Bronx, Coney Island, ate a slice at a Brooklyn pizzeria, and eventually started on our journey back south, visiting Atlantic City on the way. Today we continue on our way south, so buckle up, the adventure continues. Good morning from Atlantic City. We spent the night at the Caesars, and I don't think this gambling thing is for us really. Our winnings for the night. If you've been following our journey, you know that we couldn't really enjoy our nation's capital on the way north due to the bad weather and lack of time. But today we have a little more time to explore and frankly, the weather is, shall I say, glorious. <laughs> we are leaving Atlantic City and I wonder who would do that to an eon, but anyways, I digress. We drive non-stop to DC, passing by many of the places we visited on the way north, Wilmington, the Susquehanna River, Baltimore, we finally arrive and park at the Ronald Reagan Building on Pennsylvania Avenue, a mere two blocks away from the White House, although I must warn you, the blocks in DC are very long, so. <laughs> Looking back towards the Capitol Building, we begin walking towards the White House. The bleachers almost ready for Obama's second inauguration. Uh, we continue walking on Pennsylvania Avenue admiring the Washington architecture, passing by the Treasury Department. We arrive at the South Lawn and take a long look at one of the most secure buildings in the world. Hello there. We continue walking on this uh, large open area, which is called the National Mall. It extends all the way from the Capitol Building to the Lincoln Memorial, uh, with the Washington Monument right in the middle. The Lincoln Memorial was built in the form of a Greek Doric temple. The 36 columns symbolized the 36 states of the Union at the time of Lincoln's death. And there's the statue of Abe himself, sculpted by Daniel Chester French. Washington emanates a grandiosity, with its uh, large open spaces, oversized Greek-inspired architecture, and why not, a gigantic Egyptian obelisk smack in the middle. The National World War II Memorial honors the 16 million Americans who served uh, during the Second World War. Uh, the monument has uh, 16 pillars, each engraved uh, with uh, one of the 48 states at the time of the war, as well as uh, DC and the rest of the American territories at the time. Our next point of interest is the Washington Monument, which has remained closed, unfortunately, since the 2011 earthquake. There's the White House again, from the Washington Monument. We were here back in 1994. Notice that there is no World War II memorial yet. Uh, the DC was a much uh, less paranoid place back then. It's uh, getting chilly, so we go back to the car to get our heavier jackets. And we have lunch at this place called the Occidental Grill. Fancy place. Delicious food. We go back to the National Mall uh, and get to see this beautiful view of the Capitol building almost at dusk. And the Smithsonian Castle and the Washington Memorial, the Washington Monument, one more time. 
The Smithsonian Castle houses the Smithsonian Institution's offices and information center. The, the Smithsonian was created in 1846 for the increase and diffusion of knowledge. Today we are visiting the Air and Space Museum and I'm really looking forward to this one. It's one of those museums where you are seeing actual artifacts of, of the not so distant past, such as the Alan Shepard capsule, for example, the first American in space and second human to have that honor, uh, the Gemini 7, the first American spacewalk. Amazing to see how small these early capsules were, they were like claustrophobic. And here we come face to face with the Cold War era Soviet ballistic missile the SS-20 Sabre. There's the Pioneer and the Apollo 11 command module. There is so much interesting stuff in this place. I'm like a child at a candy store. I even get to touch a moon rock. I'm touching a moon rock. Viking never came back to This is the Viking uh, Mars lander. Uh, while the Viking 1 and 2 were on Mars doing their thing, this third vehicle was used on Earth to simulate their behavior. Pretty cool stuff. Yeah, they have a color chart for the camera for color balance. This uh, right here is a sample of aerogel. Uh, it's the lightest uh, solid ever created. It was used to collect uh, comet samples and interstellar dust. Now let's go back in time to the earliest flying contraptions. Brothers were original. We got to see different engines, planes employed, and the cockpit layouts from the 1940s to the 1970s to the legendary Boeing 747 jumbo jet. The mother of all planes, even to this day. Then we step on what I believe is a DC-3 and we see what traveling was like back in the day. Much more comfortable, I must tell you. Uh, probably much more expensive as well. Predator drones and other planes. Yeah, it's V'ger. Yep, this is Voyager. Launched in the 1970s, it is traveling further than any other man-made spacecraft ever, to the border of our solar system. Going back in time once again, here's the original Wright's Brothers flyer. <laughs> Amelia Earhart. And finally, some more space stuff. We get a peek inside Skylab, the original space station. It orbited Earth from 1973 to 1979 and then it crashed into the Pacific. There is so much more stuff, the lunar module, the Hubble telescope. You ought to come here and see it in person and by the way, it's free. Well, it's time to go. The Air and Space Museum is definitely one of my favorite ones in DC. But then again, I'm kind of partial to all this space stuff. Then turn right onto Constitution Avenue Northwest. We continue our journey south. We spend the night at the Country Inn in Petersburg, a few miles south of Richmond. A pretty good option right next to the interstate. On the next day, we continue relentlessly south, anxious to get back home. Well, the vacation is uh, nearly over. We are traveling on our journey south on I-95. But we still want to have one more attraction uh, to visit. It turns uh, the, in the 1950s, this was, there was this uh, firecracker stand in the middle of uh, the, in the border between North and South Carolina, and uh, the engineers happened to run I-95 right next to it. The place became uh, known as South of the Border, and uh, nowadays is the ultimate tourist trap. 
and we're gonna get there in about an hour. And we have arrived. Yeah, it's the ultimate tourist trap, all right. But it's a pretty unavoidable if you're traveling on I-95. Might as well enjoy the faux Mexican motif. There's food, fireworks, and you can enjoy the view from the top of a giant sombrero. What else can you ask for? Oh, it's just lies. Oh, I can see. Maybe you can wait down there, Mom. Oh no. Uh, There's Chuck. <laughs> I guess he can't see us. We're going right on up. Huh? Scared. <laughs> I'm scared. No, I'm getting scared. <laughs> uh, Look at that big old sunburrow I had over there. Wow, you can't really see it on this. Obviously, that little kid doesn't get out much. We continue on this seemingly endless journey, riding into the sunset. We cross into Georgia, and finally into Florida. We spend our last night at the Crown Plaza Jacksonville Riverfront. We also got a pretty good deal using the Hotel Tonight app. In the morning, we depart. Six hours later, we are back in the 305, Miami, Florida. I hope you have enjoyed our week-long holiday road trip along the eastern United States. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to the channel so I can keep you posted on our next adventure, which will take place in the great land of Canada. Until then, I want to thank you for watching and see you on the road. <laughs>